ASDFJKL. Learning the home row in sixth grade typing class is a lesson that served me well during my 40 years in television news. While most of us now use keyboards, we discovered a group of people in Milwaukee, the birthplace of the typewriter, who insist their equipment is anything but a dinosaur. In our Sunday morning spotlight, Michael Schlesinger explains why for them, the typewriter era lives on. My parents' brother, which was a big electric machine that when you turned it on, it went hum. Lisa Floating's earliest memories of a typewriter are when she was a child. Since then, this English lit teacher at Port Washington High School has never looked back. Only forward, or actually down, on what she's typing on her paper. You are completely present in that moment, and because your words are immediately appearing on the page, there's this authenticity to it, this, this sense of the words are flowing and you're not distracted. Lisa is a collector too. How about 52 of them, mostly manual? Every week of the year, I could have a different typewriter. <laughs> she tells me she types every day. To-do lists, uh, grocery lists, journals, uh, if just something's on my mind, there's always something uh, being typed up. And I keep quite a few in the classroom. So if there's a moment where I just need to get my thoughts down, my handwriting has uh, devolved over the course of my life, so I, I usually will type something. Her students think she's a little wacky for bringing her prized possessions, like her Smith Corona or Olympia, into the classroom. But she says there's also intrigue. Ultimately, you know, the idea that everything is contained in that mechanical machine, it draws a really interesting bunch of kids to it because folks who are mechanically minded, you know, they love to look at the, the innards. And then folks who are writerly types really enjoy just having everything they need right there. Lisa believes there's something lost in translation with kids today and how they write using their Chrome notebooks. She says they're captive to the backspace key or blinking cursor. It feels like you have to produce the, the final draft. And with a typewriter, you might have multiple, multiple drafts. And there's a real value to seeing the process, the, the recursive process of writing. You're always going back. And it's a, it's a process of, of putting words down on paper, more words down on paper. Monica Thomas is just like Lisa in the sense she too learned about typing at an early age from her parents. She also took a class in high school and is a collector. She has at least 85 in her possession. I want to, um, to share more so that, you know, I'm not hoarding them all, but also just the spirit of the, the excitement of getting to see your thoughts through your words, like right in front of you instantly. I think that's just such a, f a fun experience. Both women are part of a newly formed typewriters group. They have type-ins at Bayview Library periodically. Pete Burand also participates. And if you want stuff quick and dirty, a computer is the way to do it. Uh, if you want to write decent stuff, you will have an outline and you will have a typewriter and you will be able to plan your words and sentences ahead of time. These folks say they started this group out of obligation in a sense, especially seeing Milwaukee is where this modern day machinery began in the 1870s by politician and publicist Christopher Scholes. He also helped create the QWERTY keyboard layout we still use today. So they scrambled things around so that there was the necessity for more reach along the keyboard. For you naysayers who doubt the birthplace of the modern day typewriter was here in Milwaukee, take a look at this plaque in front of Panther Arena off State Street. I understand that it's a pilgrimage site for, <laughs> for some real collectors. Christopher T. Wood has a Smith Corona silent model from the 1950s. He's the artist in residence at the Pfister Hotel. He lets the public type what they're feeling. One note, I'm told, was from a youngster using a typewriter for the very first time. It was my first time having chocolate chai tea. It was very fun. I am eight years old. I am super excited because my friend is coming over today uh, by Eleanor. Love Eleanor. This is a, a new way of them to connect their, their hands and their minds and like, think a little bit more about what they're saying and what they're writing. So. That's exciting to me. Will typewriters ever disappear? No, they won't. They won't. Because just like classic cars, just like the idea that you have this, this object that is both aesthetically pleasing and practical. A real change in the workforce, 
in creativity, you know, in a, in a lot of ways in all of our lives.